Hi, Mom. What do you think? My God. You look like a gangster. Every family gone go against the period. But then some families be like, you know what I mean? Like, that's your life. You know what you're up against. And you know it's death, jail. Don't call me. Don't look for me to do nothing, et cetera, et cetera. But you, you're proud of the fact that you're blood. Yeah. Why is that? Why? Yeah. Because I'm down. I'm down fully. The origin of the bloods. The Bloods are a predominantly African-American street organization that originated in Los Angeles County in the early 1970s. The genesis of the Bloods is traced to the intense street violence that consumed the city in the late 60s and early 70s. Much like their rivals, the Crips, the founding of the Bloods is steeped in legend and is difficult to construct a founding narrative. But I can come up with two accounts of where the Bloods originated. These stories include T. Rogers in the jungles and other accounts that happened in Compton, California, how the Bloods came to be. The Bloods who were founded in Los Angeles County got their name from the red clothing they frequently wore to show their alliance. Before we get into the history lesson, there are some key terms I need to break down. Damu. The term Damu is Swahili for blood, which bloods and parus call each other. Besides the term of endearment, Damu can be considered the umbrella for both gangs. Paru. Parus began in Compton and got their name from a street that runs through Compton and Willowbrook. Parus wear red like the bloods, but they primarily wear burgundy. The majority of the Paru's territory are in Compton. Brims. The Brims were one of the original street gangs that helped form the blood alliance with others. And you can say the same thing for bishops. Suwu is another way how Damus greet each other, are called to signify their alliance, but the origin behind the call is also steeped in legend. But the Damu ride is popularized in the 90s with their music. In the beginning, the Crips ran the streets of Los Angeles, causing chaos and mayhem to anyone that did not become Crips. Some of these gangs you probably heard of, Power Boys of Compton, The Bishops, The Brams, Denver Lanes, Hentis Park Boys, Bonnie Hunters, and the City Stones, now today, Black Peace Stones. These gangs predate the Blood Alliance, so for now, I'm going to call these gangs Anti-Crips. There were a series of events that led to the alliance, first when Paru founders were attacked by Raymond Washington and others, then the death of Robert Ballou and the murder of Little Country of the Brims. All these events took place over a three year span. At this point, the anti-Crips had enough. In 69 Crips come about, at what point did you Paru's, that name start to come about? Well, um, originally Paru was considered we had uh, Mickey Blue was our hero, Mickey Bowen. All, all the Bowens was bank robbers. Okay. They, that's what they did. <laughs> so white men came up. They went to Miss Bowen's house, right? Came back. They came outside. Hey, Mickey Bowen and Lonnie Hall. And we like, nah. I, uh, yeah, well, we looking for the Pyru boys. That's, they're bank robbers. Mm. So they're the Pyru boys. Them four right there. Right, so that's how the name came. So to go on, in 1972, Little Billy Flowers was coming down, Com down uh, Compton Boulevard and he seen his girlfriend in a car with another guy named Jody Crawford. Jody Crawford was from Watts, from, from the Jordan Downs. So Jody came and they was arguing about the girl. Uh, Billy Flowers tell Jody, Man, I'm, I, when I go to my car, but Jody already had a gun and killed Billy Flowers, one of the first murders in Compton. Mm -hmm. And when they took him to the funeral home on Firestone, which is across the street from the Jordan Downs, the dudes from the Jordan Downs came and took his body out the casket and threw it on the floor. No. Yeah. So Miss Flowers had pudding 
Cam, Lil Vince, asked him. So they went up to Harrison Ross funeral home. The dudes came across the street, they started shooting at him. Like, who in the hell is him? We Pyrus. So when they started being Pyro, when they heard Pyrus, they started calling them roosters. Roosters are red, so they associated us with the bloods. Got gotcha. you. So that's 72, 73, the creation of Westside Pyro started. On March 21st, 1972, 20 members of the Crips attacked and robbed Robert Ballou outside the Hollywood Palladium. Shortly after a performance by Wilson Pickett and Curtis Mayfield. I didn't do it to Robert. I didn't raise a fist. I'm standing there with James. James told dude, hey, I like that leather coat. Dude said, I do too, that's why I bought it. James said, let me have your coat. And before Duke could say anything, James hit him with a right hand right, in the chin. Hit him with the chin. Hit him with, then dude kind of staggered. James took the leather coat oh. off of him. But before James, now here's the key part to all of this. When James hit that boy and the boy staggered, here come Robert Ballou. I'm thinking he running towards us. He ran by us while James is robbing his friend. He run by us into a crowd of Compton Cribs. No Mac Thompson and them were killed. No Man. Fighting the guy and that thing, I know, you know, we thought he was knocked out, and later on we found out he had died. Several anti-Crip gangs that emerged during this time couldn't compete with the Crips and grew concerned about the rise in Crip attacks. They frequently fought with the Parus, Black Peace Stones, Anthes Park Boys, and other rival gangs. Three months after Baloo's murder on June 1972, Blue and Country, a member of the Brims, was killed by a West Side Crip. In the early 1970s, when it was clear that the LA Brims did not want to become a part of the Crips, immediately that started conflict between the Crips and the Brims. And eventually it led to the first homicide which occurred on this block in June of 1972. There was a party going on right here with the Brims and the Crips rolled through and shot up the house. And in the process, they actually shot one of the Brim members in the head. His name was Fred Garrett, AKA Little Country. And he was 17 years old. The Crips had came to the wake and they actually disrespected the coffin and the body. It is believed that they turned over the coffin and his body came out and it was all kind of chaos going on in the early 1970s. But it is his homicide that really sparked off the conflict that exists today. This was the first murder committed by the Crips against a rival gang, which encouraged rival gangs to band together. There's mixed opinions on who had a meeting or who did what to start the alliance. So I think it's best if I let these gentlemen tell the story. The guys from the other side of the, the double yellow line would come over into our neighborhood, rape, rob, and burglarize certain houses. So we told them dudes, you know, if y'all got that type of shenanigans going on, y'all stay over there and y'all do it in y'all's neighborhood. And that was really the start of, of the, 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 the bickering, the fighting. I called a meeting up at Manual Arts High School, and, and there, were, there were four groups, and we all agreed that we would come together, and uh, if, if any of us had problems or, or needed help, that the others would be there to support them in their endeavors. There's a uh, safety in numbers. But regardless, the newfound Don Moves was done with Dylan with the Crips. In order to establish a new federation of non-Crip committees, several small gangs that felt oppressed by the Crips joined the Blood Banner. These days, the Bloods are still outnumbered by Crips and members in territory, but they still keep their presence in urban society that's from movies to music. 